Hello everybody, my name is Gravity, and welcome back to Kill or Love. Uh, so in the last episode, Grace broke up with me, uh, Anna apparently used her voodoo yandere magic and made me sleep with her, uh, so that was weird. So, um, this is chapter 5, so let's see what goes on from here. I still don't know how I got injured and why I'm in the hospital, but, uh, let's find out. Uh, hang on, let me go back. Okay. I woke up and found the room dark. Incredibly dark. It didn't matter if my eyes were open or closed. The image didn't change. Something wasn't right. The air smelled different. Grace made a soft moaning sound in her sleep. She lay next to me. I reached down to make absolutely sure she was here. Hmm, Jack? To hear her voice instead was like finding a snake in my bed. I almost fell over a, I almost fell over a nightstand. Are you okay? Bad dream. Today. She touched me, skin against skin. I remember when I was and why I was. I remember where I was and why I was here. Better? Yeah, sorry about that. Good. I settled back onto my side of the bed. Anna ruffled my hair. You startled me. I, I didn't mean to. It's okay. I know you wouldn't do that. Because you love me. Dear Di oh, this okay. This is Anna. Dear diary, it's been it's all been worth it. All the years of waiting and hoping have been so worth it. I never expected it to go go as well as it did. Now I feel so silly. I ever worried. Grace, the whore, is out of the picture. It was easy. She is so scared of everything, and Jack is all mine. I expected he would struggle a lot more. I'm so proud of him. Even in the terrible state he's in, no memories of us at all, he knew in his heart he should pick me over her. You're so cute, Jack. You were... The, the way you're absolutely helpless without me. I'll pamper you a little more. I can do that. There's no hurry. There's no rush. We've reached our happy ending. I paced around Anna's bedroom. Step... Step, 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 turn, step, 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 turn. It wasn't a very large room, about the size, about the same size as mine, and step, 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 turn. It was dark. The curtains were drawn, but it would have been dark without them, too. The alarm clock's neon green digit covered in the dark, showing that it was 5.10 a.m. and that it was Monday. Step, step, step. Anna's bed sheets rustled. She mumbled something and sat up. Jack, why are you... I took a deep breath. It helped me keep my voice from sh shaking as I answered. It's nothing. Go back to sleep. What is it? Something is wrong, isn't it? Tell me. I'll make it go away. No, please. It's stupid. Tell me. I stepped closer to the bed, banging my shin on its side and sighed. It's... it's Monday. Anna glanced over my shoulder at the alarm clock. Yep, it is. So? I have work. When Grace, when she, when I came back to an empty apartment, it was early Friday morning. I missed work on Friday. I must be on thin ice already. I didn't even call in. And? Just don't go. But, but if I don't go today, then they'll fire me for sure. So? What do you mean, so? This is serious. Don't be upset. Here. 
Anna got up, lazy, got up lazily and kissed me, held me. We stood there for a few moments in silence. There. Doesn't it all seem better now? But, but I still... Huh? No, sweetie. You start... You, you stay in today. She pressed herself harder against me. I felt her softness, the heat of her body. I could hardly feel anything else. You don't want to go to work, do you? I I don't, but I mean, I have to. You don't have to. It'll be fine. The world won't end. I was going to complain again, but she pressed her finger to my lips. You know what? An idea just came to me. If you move out of that awful apartment and come live with me instead, you won't have to work in that awful store anymore, either. That sounds nice, doesn't it? It it sounded so good. Anna understood me so well. But I wasn't sure of myself. I asked if I was really fine for me to stay here for good. Of course. I wouldn't I wouldn't want you anywhere else. Dear Diary. Oh my god, oh my goodness. How is this going so well? I never, uh, it never worked so well before. Not with the patients I've tried it on, even through, even though they were terminal. Even though they had no one to visit them. All of them kept being themselves right up to the end. But with Jack, I can do anything. He's like clay. I could change him into anyone, anyone, anything I want. How awful. He's so lucky that it's me doing this. Could you imagine someone else with that kind of responsibility? No, no, no. What am I saying? No one else could make him so willing to change. Me. Only me. He's only like this because he loves me so much. He's always loved me, even when he didn't realize it. And when he's always loved me, and I'll always love him, and we'll be together forever. Forever. I'm so happy I could scream. Right now I'm only teasing him a little, but that's okay. We have all the time in the world. Unlike those other boys, he did not, he's not about to expire. Okay, so she does have some sort of power? Days went by, maybe weeks. Jack? Come on, Jack. I laugh. If you don't let go of me, I can't go to work, you know? Then don't go. Stay here. Hey, one of us has to go. We need to live. I need you to live. Hmm. That's very sweet, but I still have to go. I wouldn't budge. She ran her fingers through my hair. I like that. If you get off me now, I promise we'll have a special surprise for you when I come back. Really? Really. I promise. Okay. I forced myself to let her go. After she went away, I laid back down on the bed. I waited for her to come back. I did nothing else.
In his surprise was a big plastic bag. It was swollen, full of something. I looked at her, then at it, then at her again, and frowned. You'll see. Come, we need to go somewhere. Go outside? Yes. Isn't that exciting? I looked away. What? You don't want to? I held up a pillow in front of me. It was meant to act as a barrier. Oh, you big scaredy cat. Come on. She took my arm and pulled. I wouldn't go. Her grip was strong, or maybe I'd gotten weak, but I stayed in place. Huh? So you really don't want to go? Let's... How come we can't just stay here? Oh, sweetie. I don't want the apartment to burn down. She made me dress in outside clothes. They were rugged and cold. The outside was even more rugged and cold. The street was wet. It must have rained. The people there were giving me looks. They were looking at me like I was trash. What? Why? What had I done to them? What had I ever done to anyone? Oh, hey. Ease up a little. You're hurting my hand. I'm sorry. That's okay. If we really don't feel like it, we can go back home right now. Really? Yes. But I know you can do this. So will you do it? For me? Uh, I... Yeah, okay. Great. Thank you, Jack. You're so good to me. Okay, um, pretty sure she's manipulating? Well, obviously she's, she's manipulating me, but like... A different kind of manipulating me, making me, like, do things. That's why people are looking at me like trash, because apparently I'm horrible to people. I don't know. We walked for over 15 minutes. My feet hurt. My legs made clicking sounds. I hadn't really walked in over a week. But I didn't complain. We're almost there. Do you know where we are? I shook my head. And it had led me somewhere I'd never been before. I've never been. Each street we passed, passed was dirtier and grayer, more abandoned than the last. And the people looked at us... People looked at us all the more meanly. I thought they were going to hurt us. But Anna wasn't afraid, so I did my best to be brave too. Whatever she had in the plastic bag, it wasn't heavy. The bag was so full it was almost the shape of a big ball. But it but it still swung so lightly. Where do you think, what do you think is in there? Anna had noticed me looking. I don't know. Want to guess? I didn't. I told her I didn't. I told her I couldn't think of anything. Oh well, you'll see soon enough. Our destination, a few minutes later, was an empty street. A whole street, blocks and blocks of it, completely abandoned. The pavement was cracked. The buildings that stood uh, stood were that stood were hollow, and everything was overgrown with weed. It was more a jungle than a city street. It was ugly. I hated to even look at it. Isn't it so beautiful? Yeah. I'll show you the best spot here. It's my favorite. But. It'll be our secret, okay? You can't tell anyone else. Okay. Oh, that's the title page. We passed through a tunnel like like opening set in tall set in a tall wide building. Beyond it was a field of brown yellow grass. It came up to my chest. Surrounding the grass were sides of a large apartment building. This used to be its courtyard. The building was molted, ugly gray. It had been like, it had, it had most likely been, ah! 
I didn't get rid of that back. It looks like it had been prettier color before it burned down. It had so many windows, none of which had glass in them. They gap they gaped down at us, empty and dark. Anna's Anna's spot Anna's spot was a square patch of concrete in the middle of the overgrown courtyard. Once there ended hand Anna handed me something from the plastic bag. It was a small gas canister and a box of matches. She emptied the rest of the bag on the concrete. Oh. When, when I saw the contents, my chest tightened and started to hurt. This? Anna, this is... On the ground were a few post-it notes, a pair of shoes, but mostly clothes. I had seen them before. They had belonged to someone I knew. Who? Someone I'd known an eternity ago. Too long ago to remember. But I knew these things were important. You know what this is? Y yes. I shouldn't. It's fine if you still recognize them. Completely fine. You're not mad. I'm not mad. Give me that. Anna grabbed the gas canister from my hands. She poured the gas out onto the clothes and the shoes and the post-it notes down to the last drop. Then she tossed the canister aside and stepped away. The canister made a tiny empty sound as it hit the concrete. Thunk, thunk. After that, there was silence. Anna? Should I... What do you think you should do? Are you really not mad? Do you... Do you... Do what... Do what... Do, 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 do. do what you think you need to do, Jack. And do it quickly. It's growing dark. I didn't bring a flashlight. So I did what I thought I needed to do. I lit the match. It took me three times to get it right. Because my... Because of my clumsy fingers. Cradling the little fire with my hands, I brought it over her things. They were wet and stink of gasoline. I held the match, I held the lit match above them. Why are you hesitating? Don't you want to do this? I. I don't know. I need to do what Anna wanted me to do, but the thought of doing it made me want to lie down and cry. I couldn't explain why those things were so dear to me. They just were. The flame had almost reached my fingers. Anna, I don't think... Do it. I dropped the match. The little fire touched the gasoline and bloomed. The sudden heat made me step back. Those things, those shoes and clothes and little yellow notes were already crackling and turning into charcoal. Anna stood by me. I waited for her to scold me, but she didn't. She put her hand in mine, our fing fingers interlocked. You did well. I did? Yes. When it came down to it, you did what you should. I'm proud of you. A warm, a warmth filled my chest. My worry for those scattered pieces of nothing on the ground faded away. I was with the love of my life, and he loved me, and was proud of me. How could I care about someone? I couldn't even remember what it had been anymore. Old clothes? Whatever. Anna giggled. Ha ha. Ha 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 Ah, you look a little insane. <laughs> I'm not gonna laugh like that. <laughs> it made me so glad to see Anna happy. <sighs> I pulled her close. After a good minute of laughing, she sighed and as if it spent if it's spent and looked up at me. What? Whatever. Wasn't that fun? Yep. The things on the ground had already gone out. They were black and unrecognizable. Let's go back home. Okay, Anna. Haha, <laughs> you're so happy, aren't you? 
And why wouldn't I be? I'm... And why wouldn't you be? I'm happy too. The happiest I've ever been. Me too. The happiest I've ever been. Really? Yep. Thank you, Jack. That means the world to me. We went away hand in hand. When do I get to kill this crazy person? But before we walked out into the grass again, I looked back one last time at the things I'd burned. Something moved at the edge of my vision, up in one of the glasses, the glassless windows. I looked again, but it was gone. This place is, this place is dangerous. Hmm? Are there people here? Uh, you know what? There just might be. Bad people. You should get home as soon as you can. Yes. Home. Where it's safe. That little slut. I hope she has a good, I hope she has a good look at, I hope she had a good look of us burning all that trash of hers. All Jack, at Jack burning it. God, I'm so proud of him. It hurts. I can't believe I miscalculated, though. I thought Grace was gone for good. I can't believe, uh, but then there she was in our hallway, asking where Jack was and what I had done with him. All this while, Jack was right on the other side of the door. Can you imagine what would have happened if I wasn't there? She would have knocked on the door or rung the doorbell, and she would have probably called out, too. It would have scared Jack so badly, I can't bear to think about it. Thankfully, I wasn't wrong about everything to do with her. She hadn't, she hadn't called the police. I knew she wouldn't. I didn't think she'd come back at all. She was still as, as scared as a little lamb. Her hand shook while she demanded I tell her what happened to Jack. He, he can't be in there, can he? She stepped forward, but when I put myself between the door and her, she backed off. I wonder how she didn't pee herself. She looks so scared. Jack doesn't want to see you. What are you doing to him? No one's seen him since I went away. It's like he's disappeared. He's been here the whole time? God, what are you doing to him? Be quiet. She was making so much noise. I put a hand on her shoulder. I had to see if she had the guts to slap it away. She stood there. Jack is perfectly fine. He's happy and doesn't want to see you again. I... I know he probably hates me now, but at least let me see him. I have to at least see him again. So annoying. Loneliness has made her desperate, unpleasant. That's what being by yourself does. Look at dear Jack. We've only been together again for a short while, and he's already such a sweetheart. And he was so prickly before. If you see him now, he'll tell you he hates you. Do you really want to hear that? No, I don't want that, but... Then go away. It's as simple as that, don't you think? Even someone like you should understand. What? Why are you so... I thought we were... She swallowed hard. I have to see him. Anna, please. Hmm. Being alone made you into a real bitch, you know that? What? What? Or did it? Were you lonely after all? It really makes me wonder. With how little money you, you, with how little money you took with you, I was sure you'd be living on the streets. But you're clean. You don't smell more than usual. I'm, I'm living with a friend. What does it matter? That's a lie. You don't have friends. Grace gritted her teeth and glared at me. She wanted to run away in shame. She's so simple, so obvious, but she couldn't leave with Jack so close. So, where are you staying? Who's, <laughs> whose cock are you sucking for rent? I, I'm not. Is that wrinkly old man you work with? It's not like that. I'm living with Dawn, but but I'm not. Oh, aren't you? 
then how are you paying back his hospitality? You don't have any money. You quit your job too, I checked. I'm not paying back anything. Don't be shy. Oh, screw you. Move. How violent. It's a good thing I separated her and Jack when I did. One more of this girl's influences, and who knows what could have happened. She tried to shove past me, but I had a little surprise in my pocket. Anna, that's... Yep. So don't you dare touch me again. Was it a knife or a gun? I might do something bad. I pressed the knife against the side of her neck. Yep, the knife. It drew blood. I couldn't help myself. But it wasn't a lot. I'm not going to kill someone out in the open like that. I'm not stupid. Grace stood petrified. You... you can't do this. I'll... You'll call the cops? <laughs> no, you won't. They won't believe you. They never do. Right? She didn't lash out for once. She must have finally realized how useless it was to try. So she shuffled away. I waved her off. It's only polite. She didn't even look back. But then she kept following me around after that. What a stalker. <laughs> what a stalker. So I had Jack burn her things. I know she was watching. It was beautiful. Now she'll back off her good. I'm back. Welcome back. Hey, ease up. You'll trip. The moment she touched me, those long hours of waiting were painted over by warmth. It made me so happy. Something smells good. Is it dinner? Yes. Oh, you remembered. I'm so glad. I made a casserole. Anna set the table and I served it. Hmm. That was really tasty, Jack. Thank you. I wasn't happy with uh I wasn't happy with the meal. It was tasteless and the meat was tough. But Anna said she liked it. She was so kind. I wish I could help more. What do you mean? With with funny, I guess. I was being serious, but she laughed. This made me feel a bit stupid. Oh, Jack, money's not a problem at all. I told you already, I've got a lot saved up, and the rent here is nothing. Oh, okay. Anna hummed contently. A minute later, she stopped. There's something you can do, actually. Really? Yes, really. Uh, but I'm not sure if you'll be up to it. Anything. I'll do anything for you. Okay, then. What is it? How can I help? Wait until bedtime, okay? I nodded. When I heard what she wanted me to do, I didn't take it well. I was angry, furious. I felt betrayed. You want me to... Yes, I do. But no. You said you said you'd never have to remember you said I'd never have to remember anything you promised I got up from the bed and started pacing from wall to wall never looking at Anna what she what she said hurt how could you lie like that oh baby please don't hate me I was shivering with anger I thought I might faint but I didn't hate her I couldn't so I stopped walking and faced her I know I said what I said, but this is important. Don't you believe me? There's only one thing I could say. Yeah. I believe you. Thank you, Jack. I love you. I love you, too. And I'm sorry. Don't. Don't say you're... Hearing Anna say she was sorry was... Was sorry was, for some reason, like a punch to the gut. It tugged at my memory. She, she always said, I know, but that's not what I'm telling you to remember. You must never remember that woman. 
Forget all you have left of her. Then, what I want you to recall goes much, much further back. It won't be easy, but when you do, when you remember, our love will be the deepest it's ever been. Don't you want that? I do. I love you. I want that. I want to love you even more. Tell me what I should remember. Anna embraced me with happy tears in her eyes, but she wouldn't tell me what I needed to remember. She said it would be pointless if she told me. I had to remember it all by myself. Anna ordered me to sit down in front of the alarm clock every day for at least one hour. I was to do this while she was at work. I was to have my eyes closed. I was to try digging back in my memories. Far, far back. I did as ordered, but the first time I tried the very next day, it was all so foggy in my mind that I couldn't even start. Thinking felt slow. It was like walking through molasses. I only made myself tired. Before I fell asleep sitting up, one thought came to me. Was thinking always so hard? The second time, I gave up right away. I couldn't do it. But I promised Anna. The next day I tried harder. My head hurt, and I felt like I was groping in the dark, scared and all alone. But I didn't. I had promised, but I didn't. I had promised Anna. I waited further in. The flash of a smile made my chest hurt, but I kept going for her love. Huh? Which one did I love? Which one did I hate? Things didn't used to be like this, did they? This feels wrong. Something went terribly wrong. I need to make sense of it. Days later, while going back in my memory, I reached a wall. A dam. I felt I should try to climb over it, so I did. There were things out there I didn't want to see, so I went back to the puddle I'd been searching through. It was a stew of love and fear and hate, given and taken, seemingly at random. It was a mess, but it was a mess in my head. I would make it, I would make it make sense. Jack! Yes, Anna? I'm going to work. Are you going to say say bye? Alright, this is chapter six, so I'm going to go ahead and stop for now. And the next video will be up soon. I'm getting tired and I don't want to read it while I'm sleepy. I'm kind of curious about what's going to happen. This story is kind of dragging on, but I'm going to finish it. Alrighty, thank you everybody for watching and bye-bye.